Okay, hi there. Um, going to do this sort of uh, poonage video on uh, Du Ficar 1924. Now, this man is a sort of advocate of Haran Yaha, or Yahyaha. I can never pronounce it. Anyway, um, sort of Islamic creation science sort of thing. Um, here we are. Haran Yaha. Yeah. Uh, skulls that demolished Darwin. This is actually in fact part 27. I've picked on part 27 because it's like the shortest one and so I can get some things words in afterwards. Um, I did write to Mr. Uh, Ficker, if that's his real name or her real name, um, and he said, fine, he, I could use the videos but only if I use them in their entirety, so I've got to show you the whole thing. Uh, it's only four minutes long, it's not too bad. Here we are. 86 million years old! Look at that. that. I don't know much about Tibetan foxes, I've got to be honest, but 86 million years old. Darwinists have to explain why an 80 million year old wolf, a 96 million year old panda, or a 75 million year old rhinoceros have never changed since. Well, that's because they weren't around that time. Um, 83 million year old antelope, 90 million year old hyena, 70 million year old zebra. But do these things really live with dinosaurs? No, they didn't. Darwinists must account for how an 86 million year old Tibetan sand fox illustrated in the millions of other specimens are absolutely no different from members of the same species alive today. No, you have to explain why you've got an 86 million year old fox girl or whatever. Um, that just doesn't exist. If it did, it would totally rewrite evolution. Um, which is probably the idea, of course. Um, unfortunately, though, it's not scientific. It does not fit in. And I think we'd have heard about it by now. Spectacled bear skull. Don't know that much about spectacled bears either, but I do know they're one of the older groups of bears. They uh, here we are, 85 million years ago. Now, in fact, um, the bear, bears themselves about five million years ago, just at the beginning of the uh, Miocene. Um, it's when they were radiated mostly. Um, they actually came from um, the candids, uh, canids, I should say, candids. The canids uh, were, of course, the canines, the, the dog group, and they split off from them probably some 20 million years ago or something like that. Um, but certainly not uh, 85 million year old. Uh, 85 million years ago, it was before the big meteor strike that uh, now seems highly likely um, that wiped out the dinosaurs. Certainly the great extinctions of 65 million years ago Whatever caused them, we saw the end of all creatures larger than um, a sort of rabbit size. So, 88 million years ago, there you go, there's the, that, that wolf. Now, wolves, we've got modern wolves, we have uh, fossils of, say, a million year old uh, fossil modern wolves. Um, we also have two sort of two million year old fossils of earlier wolves. Um, so he says we have to ex constantly searching for evidence to confirm the theory of evolution. Well, um, this certainly um, evidence is there everywhere, but it's not evidence like this. It's not made up evidence. This is made up evidence. Uh, on such a piece of evidence, the 88 million year old wolf skull. Where on earth did they get that figure from? Where did they get the wolf skull from? Um, nearly everything seems in these things to be coming from China. Um, I've looked some of these up, and I've not actually found <laughs> any evidence of these of these uh, fossils. Um, so there we go, 65 million year old again. Again, that uh, that wolf, fox, I should say, whatever it is. Incredible. That was must should have been wiped out with the dinosaurs, really, shouldn't it? No evolutionist, whether gradualist or punctuationist. Oh, now, this is a quote. This is a quote. I'll come to this later. This is a quote. Um, and it's a misquote, obviously. It's Mark Ridley. Um, Mark Ridley wrote a book on evolution. Uh, now, Richard L. Kleiss, here's another quote. It makes out as if Richard L. Kleiss is some sort of scientist. No, he's a creation scientist, which is, of course, an oxymoron. Um, yeah, we go on again. Here's the old 65 million year old Asian wild dog illustrates exactly the same features as living today. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't, because there is no such thing as a 65 million year old um, fossil of that, of that species. If there were, I think we'd know about it. Now, bear with me. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is have a look at mammals in general, isn't it? Um, 
if we go back sort of 300, four, 300, 350 million years ago sort of period, now you're going to find that there are reptiles roaming around on the earth I get together with lots of arachnids and various other amphibians, etc. An articulated jaw was what happened to one of these reptiles. Most reptiles all have a jaw, opens and shuts, a fairly basic open shut procedure. Now an articulated lower jaw meant that a certain group of reptiles then had the ability to eat different foodstuffs. They could explore and exploit more things. So we had a split-off group and these were known as the mammal-like reptiles for this jaw, re reasons of the jaw. So um, anyway, along came the Permian extinctions um, which made a fairly, killed off 90% of life. That was around about 250 million years ago. And it was this that gave rise to the dinosaurs, in fact. It was not the time of the mammal, it was the time of the dinosaurs, the, the reptiles that became dinosaurs. And the evolution, they had a blank canvas in which to spread into, okay? Now, 65 million years ago, a similar thing happened. Of course, this massive meteor strike that seems very likely wiped out the dinosaurs and 60-70% of life on Earth. And once again, this blank canvas appeared. But it wasn't the reptiles that were there to take advantage of this. This was a different time, a different climates, and this was the time where the mammals that had evolved in all that time, the mammals had a chance to dominate. And this indeed is what happened. It's those big changes. What we find is, if we go back 40 million years, for instance, you can trace back the canid group, the one, the wolves that you talk about, and the bears. Now, the bears, in fact, did break off from the canid group in a different direction. If we go back to earlier still, you'll find that the, the feline group and the canid group again branch. Now, the canid group, you look at the wolf for instance, now you say there's, a, there's a something like a 65 million year old wolf, I can't remember exactly. Um, no, no, the wolf, the modern wolf, we have, we have fossils that go back about a million years. Now, we can trace back wolves around about 7 million years. The dire wolf, for instance, an extinct form of war wolf, was obviously the ancestor of modern wolves. Foxes, also, another branch taken off. Um, so we, we can follow the branches of wolves and foxes with great ease. They were not around during that period. The earliest canine, canid, uh, it was a type of weasel creature. Okay. Now the thing is, with these videos, you're obviously trying to spread to a select audience. Now, I've asked your question to some friends of mine a couple of days ago. Um, the one that says, Darwinists must explain why there's a 89 million year old fox skull or something. Um, and I said, can you see anything wrong with that? And they thought about it and they couldn't really find anything wrong with that. And this is one of the problems. You see, you are preaching to people who are fairly ignorant of the ways of evolution and by making stuff up you think you can get converts and tell them it's truth it's not truth it's not backed by evidence there is no evidence in what you say these there's not even any evidence of the age of these these skulls you're basically just trying to do what uh, christian creationists do but in, in a different way you're, you're adding age rather than taking it off and uh, seem to think that this is the answer things didn't just suddenly appear they gradually appeared and we can trace the lineage of them. So um, you're just trying to preach to the converted. I'm running out of time. Now, so I'll go on to something else. Okay, just, just very quickly. Um, bears, for instance, just to have a quick mention of those. Around about five million years ago, we see a big radiation in the speciation of bears. The oldest panda skull, for instance, found is two to three million years old. It's about half the size, half size of the modern panda. And um, there are larger pandas found as well. But the thing is, it still ate bamboo. So we know that it must have a lineage going back slightly further. And the speckled bear being one of the uh, older species of bear also. But these species can still remain and you can still have a break off species. This is quite possible and it fits in perfectly with evolution. So um, it's all nonsense I'm afraid, but peace for now. I've run out of time.